Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra. In Shiksha Mantra, today we have a very very important discussion regarding English. Now you may ask me, sir, every day you discuss about English grammar. So what's the speciality about the discussion today? Actually, today we have a comparison. Comparison between two very very close topics in English grammar. But uh, before we start, let me show you something that when I choose a topic, this topic is obviously be asked to me by any of my subscribers. So here, one of my subscribers has asked me the difference between participle and gerund. So his question was, sir, how can we differentiate between participle and gerund? So today we are going to discuss the difference between participles and zirunds and how we can find them out. So it's participles but versus zirund. But the point is not every participle. Every participle doesn't match with a zirund. Rather, it's only the present participle that has the same form that of the zirunds. Because you know that present participle also ends in ing just like the zirund which also gets the suffix ing. So both the present participle and the zirunds they end in ing and there's every chance that we confuse them. We confuse present participles and zirunds and today we'd learn, today we'd get the expertise to find out how to differentiate them. And after this session, I can assure you, you won't mark them up anymore. So let's begin our discussion here in Shiksha Mantra. So Zerunds versus Participle. Before we start, I have three questions for you. And uh, due course of this discussion, we'll find out the answers of these three questions. And when the answers of these questions would be found out, I can assure you, you won't have any problem regarding zirunds and participles. So what are these three questions? The first of them, how are they different from each other? So we know zirunds, we know participles, but how are they different? First, we must learn their difference. The second is how to differentiate them. Is there any clue with which we can differentiate zirunds from participles? The answer is obviously yes, and in our discussion, would learn it. And the third thing that we we'll try to find out if there's any easy trick to do that, if there's any easy trick to differentiate between zirunds and participles. So when we get the answers of these three questions, we are going to get it very easily and that's our target. But before we start, it's our important uh, duty. Yes, I'm calling it our duty to learn the difference between zirund and present participle. How are they different from each other? The first thing, as you know, both zirund and participles, they are called the verbals or the nouns or some other parts of speech, adjective, etc. Those are formed from verbs. So basically, they are verb. These forms, zirunds and partic present participles are derivatives of verb forms. And both the verb forms end in ing. So where lies the difference? Their difference is in their function. Yes, dear friends, if you have followed my discussion regarding parts of speech. And every time, most of the times when I discuss regarding English grammar, I always inspire you 
to learn parts of speech well because everything is there in the parts of speech and parts of speech is nothing but words used with function so the function with which a word a particular word is used in a sentence is very very important and when you find out the different functions of these verbs with ing you could very easily understand what is a zirund and what is a present participle you could very easily find out whether it's a zirund or a present participle why because zirund acts like a noun whereas present participle acts like either a verb or an adjective so this lies the difference here's the clue a present participle always works like either a verb or an adjective whereas a zirund acts like a noun let me have an example for you with which you would very easily understand this teaching is my passion so if we discuss this first the first sentence teaching is my passion so here teaching teach is basically a verb as you know teach is a verb with which ing is added to form it and this teaching this verbal it's accepting verb it's governing the verb as well what is my passion teaching so it's working like a noun there's no confusion it's working like a noun so the function that the verbal gets here is that of a noun for naming for being used as the subject of a verb that's why there's no confusion as we know when it's used like a noun it's zirund so there it's used as a zirund and if we look at the second sentence so what you get here i love teaching jobs so here the same thing is happened here also teach plus ing it's coined and it comes before a noun jobs so it's attributed for a noun it's qualifying the noun so it's getting the, the function of describing so it's a describing word here and you know when it's describing obviously it's an adjective and we have already learned adjective means it's a present participle so when the verbal form is working as an adjective it's obviously present participle so that's how we have found out that the same verbal teaching is used once as zirund and as present participle in a different occasion for partaking a different nature for performing a different function is different so function is so very important that with the function you have to find out the nature of the verbal so let's uh, shift to the discussion of zirund's versus participles and here we'll get a different angle with some uh, detail a zirund is a verb form that functions as a noun only we have learnt it but in other verbs if a progressive form of a verb that is verb 1 that is the present form of the verb plus ing we get it and it functions as a noun we call it a zirund so let me synopsize it verb plus ing form that functions as a noun it's a zirund but a participle never functions as a noun it either functions as a verb or as an adjective so there lies the difference the difference is that of noun verb or adjective so learning how to differentiate how to get the function and the parts of speech of a particular word in a sentence is very very important that's why i would ask you to follow the uh, link here that I, i have put in the i button above here i've put 
the discussion of parts of speech that I have had here in my channel, you may actually watch it, watch it very keenly. And uh, by watching it, you would learn how to find out the different functions of different words in a sentence and get their parts of speech. One, you get that practice well. Obviously, it's going to get much help for you. And here, we would learn more about it. We have the third question there. Is there any trick? So, dear friends, let's discuss about the trick here. If an ing form of a verb that is progressive functions as a noun, it is a zerund. If it functions as an adjective that is modifies a noun, it is present participle or participial adjective. But sometimes it works as an action verb that is modifies a noun its present participle so these are the simple trick that you have to follow and there's no confusion if you get to it clearly but we have another consideration here if you fail to find out the proper function i have another trick here for you and that is the position that those zerun partics in ascent. We have already discussed that zerun partics the nature of a noun. So when you fail to get the function properly, or you have gathered the function, you have grabbed the function. Now you want to form it. You want to assure whether you have uh, grabbed it right or wrong. So there you have to check the position of the zerun, where it is placed. Zerund is a noun. It's a verbal noun. We have already discussed it. And when it's a noun, obviously it would occur in those five positions where a noun may occur. And there we have a list of them before the main verb as the subject. Dancing makes me happy. So here makes verb and it comes as the subject. Next, after an action verb, that is when it's a transitive verb as an object. I hate dancing so here it comes as an object after the linking verb as a subject complement like i'm not thinking about dancing i'm not thinking look i'm not thinking about dancing okay and it also comes after the proposition that's also another oh sorry there's some changes actually it will come here my passion is dancing. So, dancing, after the linking verb, it comes. And here, it's after the proposition as the object of a proposition. I'm not thinking about dancing. So, it's, it comes after the proposition about as the object of a proposition. And then, obviously, as possessive adjective, like everyone loves your dancing. So, these are the five positions where a zund may occur so you may find out zund by their position as well they would come as the subject of a verb as the object of a verb as the subject complement of a linking verb as the object of a proposition or the object of a possessive pronoun so these are the five different places in a sentence five different positions where you may find out zund and now there we have three different positions where you may find out present participle. Where are they? Just before a noun. Look at the burning trend. So trend, here it comes as an adjective. So it's present participle. Now it's actually used attributively. We have already discussed in adjective that an adjective might be used either attributively or predicatively. So here it comes as an attributive noun, present participle. Just after a noun, the girl dancing on the stage is my sister. So the girl noun after it comes the adjective or the present participle. So both is possible before the noun as in attributively and also it may occur after the noun. Here comes the another one. That is after a linking verb as the main verb. Like this movie is exciting. 
this is also verb and more than that this is the main verb is this is a linking verb or auxiliary verb whatever you may call it but finally is exciting this is the verb where exciting is the main verb and it's present participle yes dear friends that's why where i have discussed about the uh, present continuous tense okay i have discussed it now present continuous tense past continuous tense but in continuous aspect i have told you that after be verb what we place that's not verb ing only but we place present participle so there present participle protects the nature of a verb not singularly but in collaboration with the auxiliary verb or the be verb so these are the three positions where you may find out present participle but that's not all there's sometimes you get confused after learning so many things that's why the trick will continue i've told you now we have to find out the answer of those three questions so this is the last trick you have to apply because sometimes the present participles and those runes they get really elusive and they are very much there to deceive you so how to protect my followers my subscribers my students my friends from getting deceived by zerund and participles so that's why this rules is so very important it's it's five star rule now why actually there's no tip to find out the difference between a zerund and a present participle when they are followed by a linking verb so this is very much important when they follow a linking verb it's very difficult to find out whether they are zerund or they are participle so the trick is you need to look at their function in that case finding out the function is very very essential a zerund noun will rename the subject like when it's zerund it's noun it's renaming the subject my passion is dancing so dancing this ing form this verbal is actually describing renaming the subject passion so when it renames the subject passion look dancing my passion is what dancing so dancing is the name here renaming the subject that's why here it's the zerund and not the participle but when it's present participle that is adjective it will modify the subject like the song is exciting how is the song the song is exciting so exciting is obviously not the name but a quality that's you have to understand it's a quality it's the it's not name so there exciting it's modifying the subject song that's why here it's present participle and when it comes after be verb when it comes after a linking verb as action verb as the main verb there's no confusion it's present participle that's happening here ashis is dancing ashis is dancing obviously dancing cannot be a name for ashis a person we know it and dancing cannot be a quality of ashish so it's neither name nor quality of the subject it's neither name nor quality of the subject that's why this is verb it's very very simple consideration with which you can very easily find them out so dear friends this is how you can protect yourself against the elusive nature of zerunds and present participles and if you follow the discussion if you find them out properly i'm sure you aren't going to get yes dear friends you aren't going to get befooled by those zerunds and participles and that's everything from the discussion today we are returning very soon with another very fresh discussion from your demand from the demand of my subscribers till then stay with us by subscribing our channel
by pressing the bell icon hard for notifications we are returning very soon bye bye happy learning